Welcome to another edition of the Backyard Professor Videos. I'm out here in my beautiful backyard this morning. I'm Kerry Schertz, the Backyard Professor. I've been exploring the internal consistency. This is part, this is either three or four, I can't remember which. Doesn't matter, it's all internally consistent, even though I'm not. <laughs> uh, I've been discussing this complexity and the internal consistency of the Our Book of Mormon. I've been using Donald W. Perry's discussion in Susan Easton Black's book, Expressions of Faith, published in 1996 by Deseret Book and Farms. I've worked my way up to page 214 now. He's discussing the historical unity of warfare, and he's examining the Book of Mormon very minutely, in explicit detail, and he's finding that nothing is out of line, nothing is wild and purple, nothing is contradictory. Remarkable. The Book of Mormon recalls historical situations, characters, and places that are external to the chronological and geographical setting of the Jaredites, Nephites, and Mulekites. Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Solomon, the building of Solomon's temple, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zedekiah, the exodus from Egypt, and the Great Tower are mentioned in the book, but they do not belong to its immediate setting. Geographical, genealogical I mean, genealogical references presented in the record make solid connections between the house of Israel in the old world and the family of Joseph in the new world. The family of Jared is directly linked with the era of the Great Tower and the family of Lehi is shown to belong to the setting of Jerusalem shortly before its destruction by Babylon. The Book of Mormon also sets forth a host of historical references, characters, and circumstances that so far are found only within its pages. Consider this. The treatment of wars and warfare in the Book of Mormon. The book features 15 major conflicts, including the early tribal wars, the wars of King Laman's son, sons, and the war of Amlici, the destruction of Ammonihah, the war of the Ammonite succession, the Zoramite war, the first and second Amalekiahite wars, the rebellion of Paanki, the war of Tubaloth, the war of Moronihah, the War of Gadianton and Kishkumen, the War of Gideonhai and Zemnuraiha, the Rebellion of Jacob, and the three phases of the final Nephite Wars. The Book of Mormon writers and editors dedicated anywhere from a few verses, such as the Rebellion of Paanki in Helaman 1, verses 1 through 13, to 12 chapters the second Amalekiahite War in Alma 51 through chapter 62 to each of the major conflicts. Students of the Book of Mormon can, attack, can attach to many of the 15 major wars approximate dates or seasons, geographical locales, underlying causes, battle tactics, military maneuvers, and final outcomes. Further than this, however, individual campaigns and engagements existed within each major war, of course. Within the framework of the 15 major wars mentioned above, John L. Sorensen has identified more than 100 distinct conflicts in the Book of Mormon record. His identification includes the Lamanite, the Nephite, and the Zenophite initiatives, Nephite versus Nephite conflicts, the confrontations between the Lamanites and the anti-Nephi Lehi's. Further, we find in the book references to attacks and counterattacks, armies pursuing or fleeing from other armies, strategies and political maneuvers, violent contentions, defeats and victories, the mobilization of troops, the preparations for war, the marching armies, the captives and prisoners of war, 
the deployment, the redeployment, and the positioning of troops, military spies, dissident forces, fortifications of cities and sites, the capture, the loss, and the recapture of cities, descriptions of combat, guerrilla movement, the flanking of troops, and other tactics, the raising of armies and the recruitment of soldiers, strategic offenses and defenses, descriptions of military leaders and dissenters, the reinforcement of troops, armies against organized robbers, slaughter, bloodshed, and the extermination of entire peoples. In addition to all of this wealth of detail, the record identifies many of the weapons and the armor used by different warriors at various times, including the sword, the scimitar, the bow, the arrow, the breastplate, the shield, the headplate, the arm shield, the club, the sling, and all manners of weapons of war, Alma 2.12. Yet with all of these details, the presentation of the wars and warfare in the Book of Mormon contains a textually consistent account that both recalls historical reality and lacks contradictory elements. And I got news for you. That is mighty impressive. I say the internal consistency the vast complexity, the sweep and scope of the Book of Mormon narrative shows that the argument that the Book of Mormon has nothing in its favor, no verification, no historical reality, is just a tissue of absurdity invented by Joseph Smith. I say that argument is false.